ridiculous that you know a um, you know poor student from uh, Oklahoma City can't get into OU and yet their parents are being taxed to fund somebody else who took their place at OU who's not even from Oklahoma. That was Representative Kevin Calvey talking about academic scholarship dollars to our state universities. Are Oklahoma students getting passed over, losing scholarship dollars to out-of-state students? We are joined now by Representative Kevin Calvey. What do you think the problem is? What are you concerned about? Well, Maggie, we're in a situation today in our state budget where people are being asked to pay more in taxes, even though you know, many people are hurting in Oklahoma. 20,000 people have lost their jobs in the past few years due to low oil prices and uh, we're being asked to pay more in taxes, potentially, when I think perhaps we should look at maybe government trimming its own budget first before they go asking more from the taxpayers. So with this particular thing, uh, I actually was notified about it by a constituent who has a daughter who's a freshman at OU who was passed over for some scholarship funds uh, that went instead to people from Texas or even foreign countries. And that just doesn't seem like a good use of taxpayer dollars uh, when we're in the situation we're in right now. And you talk about that though, what about out-of-state tuition? We know that it's significantly greater than in-state tuition. So if we can give someone from out-of-state or from another part of the world a few thousand dollars to come here and then pay potentially tens of thousands of dollars more than our own in-state student, isn't that a financial win for the university and the state of Oklahoma? Not necessarily, because even with out-of-state tuition, there is still uh, operational costs and things like that at the university that are supported by taxpayer dollars. So even with out-of-state tuition, there are some marginal costs, at least, uh, that are borne by the taxpayers of Oklahoma. Now, if somebody's just paying full freight and all that, perhaps that is a good decision. But when you talk about giving scholarships to people that are from out-of-state, scholarship money that could be going for in-state residents, that just doesn't seem like a good use of taxpayer dollars. It doesn't seem fair that, for instance, a say a uh, lower income family in Oklahoma City uh, has a child that can't get a scholarship and yet they're being taxed in order to give a scholarship to somebody from Texas or some foreign country. It just doesn't seem fair or right. What about this though, like our executive producer for example, she is an example, she came from California, she got a scholarship, partial scholarship to come to OU and has since stayed in the state now, you know, a decade and is paying into our tax base. We attracted her to Oklahoma via that scholarship and now she's here helping fund our state because she's a taxpayer and she said she's well paid past in taxes what she was given for her small scholarship. What do you say to that? Well, I would say for each such example like that, let's look at who's more likely to stay in the state. Somebody who grew up here, or somebody who came in from out of state. And I think that's particularly true uh, of people that uh, can go just over to Texas or something like this here. And I would like to see an analysis of that because I suspect at the end of the day that uh, it doesn't bear a good rate of return for the state of Oklahoma. Let's take a look at what Oklahoma State University, they recently released the following statement in you know, response to this. And they say that you know, um, at OSU, non-resident undergraduate students contribute more than $225 million to the university through tuition fees, room and board, book and supplies. What do you have to say to that? They're saying, hey, this is actually bringing in a lot of money. So if we give a few thousand dollars to people, we're actually creating much more revenue. Well, I think that uh, we need to look at whether or not the, uh, that would be the same way if they gave that to in-state students and uh, going forward with that. But the problem is the higher education department hasn't been audited in years and we just don't know. For instance, we, uh, we can determine even without an audit that the administrative costs in our higher education system in Oklahoma, that's state funded college and universities, are 70% higher than the national average. That means that if you just went to the national average, you'd save $374 million a year for the taxpayers. Now that's the kind of thing that we ought to be looking at. And uh, with regard to scholarships and where they go, we need to look at what's benefiting Oklahoma residents instead of people from outside the state. You've talked specifically about academic scholarships, but why wouldn't you broaden this then to athletic scholarships? Why are athletes somehow put in a separate category? We're allowed to pull from around the country and the world to have athletes come to our state, but not necessarily for academics. Well, obviously, the athletic programs at any major university are really a money-making venture, uh, and that seems pretty obvious. Uh, with academic scholarships, and also with the athletic scholarships, it's not like you're denying somebody an Oklahoma resident in education because they don't get an athletic scholarship. There's other things that can be done to have an in-state resident there. With regard to academic scholarships, shouldn't they be reserved 
uh, for students that are from Oklahoma because you are actually denying an Oklahoma resident potentially an education by using those taxpayer dollars to give a scholarship to somebody from Texas or somebody from a foreign country. What about though we have a genius that comes here to OSU, OU goes on to make a product, you know, goes on to become a billionaire and then comes back and does different types of grants to the schools, different types of naming to different things at the university. That's an academic you know, situation there, but isn't that a great revenue generator for a school potentially? Yeah, but look at all the Oklahoma residents that would be denied an opportunity to go to that school that could also come up with those uh, inventions and things like that that could, could be monetized and help the state. Now, the people who are most likely to stay in the state and help our workforce are people who grew up here, and I think we should be reserving those scholarship funds on the academic side for people from Oklahoma.